We are at the moment of our keynote speaker. Nous sommes arrivés au moment de notre keynote speech. Et là, les créatifs qui sont là et les développeurs pourront maintenant échanger avec Ime. So, Ime Archibong, the head of product and experimentation and former vice president of product partnership at Facebook, is connecting with us on Zoom to connect with Haitian. Pour parler avec Haitien, Monsieur Justin Francisco, Monsieur Son Moon, qui est vraiment, vraiment important au niveau de Facebook. You know, Moon Noir, qui a vraiment plus de valeur, qui a plus de statut under Facebook, en compagnie que nous qui prenons, qui déjà avait dit en pile à travers le monde. Et Monsieur passionné tout pour la communauté. Monsieur passionné tout pour la créativité autour du monde. Ma femme nous connaît que il était venu à Haïti déjà. Il était venu en mission secrète. Sans personne, nous ne pouvons pas même connaître s'il est un touriste ou pas. Monsieur était venu, monsieur était exploré à Haïti, il était posté sur Instagram, Citadel et Jacques Mel, et il était visité sa cala dans Cité Soleil. Donc, il met oui à Haïti, il est venu à Haïti déjà, et c'est ça qui fait nous vraiment fier que il voulait reconnecter avec la communauté. C'est une opportunité pour lui-même, capable de vraiment connecter avec nous. Et nous sommes membres de Facebook Developer Circle, qui est un cercle de Facebook en Haïti à travers Bunch. Et Circle, ça très actif. Il y a un Circle qui est actif dans le niveau Amérique là. Et c'est justement le comportement ça et tout le travail qu'on a fait, même avec COVID-19, que nous avons tourné tout le bagage online, qui était vraiment justifié que nous sommes capables de attention au monde aussi senior que nous aimons. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very, very honored and proud to introduce to you Haiti Ime Archiba. Mark, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Excited to be here. Um, I appreciate the invite and um, really excited to engage with everybody. I got the opportunity ahead of time to read through everyone's background, uh, so have a good context and, and um, perspective on who's in the room, who's me asking questions. I'm really eager to get to that. I, I often notice that um, with small rooms like this, um, being able to actually hear from you what's top of mind for you is actually the most meaty part of the, the discussion. So I'm gonna get to that as fast as I can, but just a couple of different things maybe up front. Um, I tend to usually consider myself a, a global citizen, but um, woefully what Mark's introduction reminded me of is I speak one language. <laughs> so I don't know how global you can consider yourself if uh, you're only armed with one language. But um, truly, I was born uh, to Nigerian immigrants in the middle of the United States. Uh, I was raised in the United States on the southeast side. I got to do my studying and my training in the northeast part of the country um, where I went to a school that definitely had a global population, definitely got exposed to people around the globe. Uh, my first professional job with IBM um, took me out to Arizona, which is in the southwest corner of the United States. And then I reside here now in Silicon Valley, uh, San Francisco, which is on the west coast of the United States. But between work and travel, I've had the opportunity, um, really the privilege to to have visited over a hundred different countries um, over the course of the last few decades in my life, which has been um, amazing. And um, a definitely a memorable trip was in 2017 when I made my way out to, to Haiti. And uh, it was one of these trips that was supposed to be uh, probably more tourism and travel and vacation, but quickly evolved into a work trip. And I consider a privilege that what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is what I love. So it's no surprise that some of my personal time blends into my work time because I'm, I'm pursuing that same passion. But as I started to reach out to friends that were connected to the country uh, and who had people in Haiti, um, I was asking around, I was saying, I really want to understand what the local tech talent is doing in the region. Can you connect me to folks? Can you connect me to folks? And before I knew it, I had a full week of meetings, uh, including one where I got the opportunity to meet Mark and um, was exposed to the local tech ecosystem. And additionally to that, <clears throat> I think the potentially surprising thing for me at the time, but I also got the opportunity to be exposed to creative talent in, in Haiti too. Um, whether it was watching music or, or talking to some of the musicians in Port-au-Prince, um, got to walk around clearly the art district down in Jacques Mel and, and exposed to some of the artists down there that are doing some amazing work. Uh, and um, I, I jokingly say that the culinary arts was the thing that I really fell in love with when I was down in Jacques Mel. Honestly, one of the best fish meals that I've ever had happened on a a small local beach um, off the 41, um, just east of Jacques Mel, and that'll uh, that'll always be memorable for me as I as I think about that trip and that travel. But you know, honestly, being surprised and uh, then inspired really by the local tech and the creative talent in Haiti um, was was a blessing. I mean, I, I think that both creatives and technologists have a lot in common, right? 
I tend to have a bold vision or a story for what the future is going to look like. And you are going to use all of your talents, your tools, and your techniques in order to move your community, your friends, your family, and to really to inspire the world to kind of realize and see that future vision. Um, in addition to that, I think that there's some stuff that is fairly unique to Haiti that the rest of the world is waking up to right now. But like some of the best creative works that I've ever seen experienced and then some of the most interesting and most innovative technologies that I've ever seen have mainly come from two things, really hard constraints, right? Here is your guardrails of what you can do and what you can't do. Get creative within that space and that constraint or some type of personal proximity to a people need or a people challenge or, you know, I'll name it pain too sometimes that um, in addition to all the beautiful, wonderful things that drew me to Haiti in the first place that I experienced when I was there on the ground, there is the, there are hard constraints and there are some real challenges that you guys are proximate to on a day-to-day -day basis. But that, in my opinion, if anything, uh, prepares uh, this community, right, this community of innovators of creative talent and also tech talent to tackle what's happening right now in 2020. I don't know that the world was ready for it. I don't know that I personally was ready for, for what 2020 has brought in these first six months, but um, it really has introduced some really hard constraints in the form of a global pandemic, right? Everybody is dialing in right now across the world from Zoom and working from home, in my case, my kitchen table. But that's a hard constraint that now it's time to try to figure out what are the different creative and innovative things that we can do in that space. But then I'd also say that more recently here in the United States, which we now see is going global, is this awakening and this reckoning where we are more proximate to the pain that black and brown people have felt around the world in the United States for a long, long time. So both this global pandemic and this racial uh, injustice awakening that's happening, um, I believe that talent across Haiti is probably well positioned to start tackling some of those. Um, on the constraint side, when I think about this global pandemic, and I think about some of the, the interesting creative things and the technical things that I'm seeing emerge. Uh, the first that pops to mind for me is when COVID first started to accelerate uh, its impact in the United States and we started moving to a space where we were sheltering in place. Um, really quickly, one of the things that we noticed at Facebook was there were large populations of our employees that just wanted to figure out how to help. I'm an engineer. I don't know what to do, but I want to help. I'm a designer, I don't know what to do, but I just wanna help. And I started making calls around to some of our industry peers, whether it was Amazon, Microsoft, Slack, uh, Pinterest, kind of you name it, some of these big other industry peers out there, they were all hearing the same thing from their employee base. So we were able to coordinate um, a hackathon, a global online hackathon built for COVID-19, which attracted over 19,000 developers, technology like lovers that wanted to build and wanted to do something for COVID-19. By the way, those folks came from over 175 different countries around the world. So again, everybody wanted to chip in. And over the course of two days and then a weekend, uh, what we saw emerge was 1,500 different ideas, project proposals um, that a lot of the developers had worked in conjunction with some big organizations like the World Health Organization, like CZI, uh, Chan Zuckerberg Institute, which is working on science and working on um, eradicating disease over the course of our lifetime to really come together and really start to tackle some of the COVID um, uh, crisis and the, and kind of the global pandemic that we were facing. <clears throat> On the creative side, we saw something similar and something that I thought was fairly exciting across our platform. So, you know, you, what you saw was musicians, you saw the DJs taking to social media and realizing how much music heals, right? and using tools like Instagram Live, Facebook Live, to truly just do DJ sets from their living rooms to millions and millions of people around the world. Uh, and this continues to go on and something has been fairly inspirational and exciting for us. In addition, of course, to just healing, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the, the pain for millions around the world with music, um, they were also able to generate income for themselves. I know many of them also ran fundraisers for SMBs and the small businesses that were getting impacted by the by the sheltering in place, but in addition to that, a lot of the nonprofits who were trying to tackle some of the work on the health side, uh, and now more importantly on the on the racial justice front. So I know that we have some musicians. I think I saw one um, uh, one attendee, maybe Kamisa, who is a DJ and then also a lawyer. So I'm, I'm curious to hear from you and how how you've been approaching the situation. Um, my team, in particular, so the new product experiences uh, ex uh, experimentation team at Facebook. 
we had been working on a bunch of different music tools. And one of the things that we noticed again, as the shelter in place um, started to, to, to take effect around the world is that you would see these viral videos of people in their community stepping out on their balconies, taking an instrument out, singing to their friends and to their neighborhood, uh, playing together and collaborating together around music. Uh, so we accelerated this product that we were working on called Collab, which really was trying to let people, regardless of where you were physically, collaborate on a piece of music. And that's out now. So I encourage people to check it out. But again, one of the um, interesting uh, strategy changes and kind of the, the things that we accelerated as a result of these new constraints that 2020 brought us. Um, on the proximity to pain side, this one's personal for me. I think this one is is, is hard, but you know, the, the, the videos of the murder of, of George Floyd and then uh, several other um, stories and instances like this that happened in the United States over the course of the last couple of weeks really, in my opinion, has awoken the world to this notion of like, when we say that race is an issue, and there are racial injustice issues that are around the world, we've got to tackle them. It is now top, top of mind and it's conscious for everyone. So this proximity to real pain, the pain of our communities, <clears throat> is something that has also, in my opinion, triggered both technologists and also creative talent to step up and really figure out how we can lend our, our talents, our tools, our services to, to, to fixing things. Um, again, anecdotally, internally, when, uh, you know, and we as a company, it's deeply one of our values to try to figure out how to, to be on the right side of history when it comes to uh, this fight against racial injustice. We asked employees, again, what ideas do you have? And within a couple of days, over 700 ideas were generated. And these ideas span from everything from uh, policy changes, uh, how we should think about our algorithm, surfacing content, taking content down, um, all the way to really substantive product experiences that we can be building and that we can be doing. Um, one of the ones that we were able to sprint on very quickly was just the simple notion of ensuring that black voices, right, the people who were the most proximate to some of this pain that was happening were elevated in this global conversation that was now happening around racial justice. So we launched a Lift Black Voices Hub across Facebook. We pinned it to the top of people's news feed so that you had the opportunity to hear from Black voices on this particular topic. And that was in the form of video, news articles, um, public figures who were posting to Facebook or Instagram, local figures who were posting to Facebook and Instagram just to ensure that people were getting access to that content and getting access to the Black voices in the conversation. Um, that also bled into an opportunity for me to work with the creative community. Uh, the one person that I'll call out right now has got the opportunity to work with a Nigerian living in New York right now, a guy named Lalu, who has done some amazing art, amazing artists, uh, to, 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 to promote one of his pieces that he made during this conversation that had the names of some of the, the victims uh, and um, uh, on, the back of a, on the back of a gentleman who was raising a fist and the piece speaks for itself, no words other than the names of, of victims um, to really let you know what we're fighting for in the United States and now more broad, broadly around the world. So. I could go on, I could ramble forever. Like I say, I think the most, uh, the most important piece of this is the Q&A piece, and I'm really, really excited to dive into this with you guys. But in closing, I know that many of you are beginning right now, Mark, as I see you come back, to be thinking through what projects you're gonna tackle and you're gonna work through during this particular program. And you know, my only steer, my maybe only challenge to the group is, is really to think about those two things that I've introduced. Like there are some new macro constraints that 2020 has brought the world in the form of this global pandemic. What are the creative, innovative opportunities for you as a technologist or for you as a creative person to, to really, to really to build within that and those new constraints? And then the second piece is just what are the challenges and the things that you're most proximate to? I read your bios. I found all of them incredibly inspiring. Not only are you talented with kind of the, the, the surface level talent that people probably see, but then what you care about, the issues that you care about also resonated with me. And if you are proximate to those challenges, go tackle those challenges, figure out who you can work with, who also is excited about those challenges and, uh, and get to work. Because I'm pretty sure that there's, uh, there's gonna be some inspirational and innovative stuff created there. I'll pause there, Mark, a lot for you to translate, but uh, <laughs> let's get into the Q&A. You don't even have any idea about what I just said about you. Maybe <laughs> what you said, maybe it's not, but I'm sure Haiti had a I good idea you. and now we're getting I ready <laughs> to take questions. Uh, but, yes. Okay, so my first question, like as 
I saw that you were head of product and that's what the main thing you're doing. So my first question is how do you go from the your personal your personal workflow for getting from the IT to a product maybe to start working on the product like your thought process how do you get the id developed it and getting input like you you just add an id right now and then what will be your workflow to get it maybe not the product itself but ready to start working on it yeah it's a, it's a great question i mean there's a there's a bunch of different ways to get started and um i by no means say that the approach that we take is like the only approach that someone should take. But, you know, going from idea to getting started, I do think that you want to, as quickly as possible, test the core hypothesis that you have for your particular product. So starting higher up the funnel, some of the things I just talked about, there's probably some real constraints. So understanding what environment you're building in and what is actually feasible kind of gets you a, a pool of options and ideas to go and build. I think that for any brand new product, I go back again to this notion around being proximate to it. Doing product is so hard that you know you're gonna need the energy that's gonna come from within in order to make it happen. So choose something that you are energized by and you're proximate to. And then the question is, is generate a bunch of solutions. So you have your thesis, you have your problem statement, it's either a need. Uh, from a Facebook perspective, we tend to think about people first and foremost. So I think about people needs, I think about people pain. What are we trying to solve for? And then ideate and come with a, a bunch of different solutions. Um, good example of this, we just had the team earlier this week uh, think about, again, racial justice and what we could be doing. We used a couple different constraints uh, and the team generated maybe 30 or 40 different ideas to think through. All the ideas are good, but collectively brainstorming will probably shape them down to maybe two or three to really actually go and explore. And then I think the next task for the team before you actually really start going and building anything is what are the hypothesis? What are the assumptions that you're making? What are the things that you can test and that we can validate in the cheapest way and the fastest way possible before going and putting a bunch of investment into building the product? So that could be de-risking the desirability. How do we quickly try to understand whether people want this or not want this? Is there a way for us to, you know... Je vais uh, Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. No. Sorry. No. Sorry. Sorry. No. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I apologize. Sorry. Um, uh, so, yeah. De-risk the desirability. Are there people that actually want this product or not want this product? Um, the feasibility. So, technically, can you actually pull this thing off? Uh, and then, ultimately, if the product needs to, to have a viable business model, is there going to be a business model that you can put into place to sustain and build the product over time? I'll pause there though. I apologize for, for not giving space for translation. We'll get the next question from Naomi. Naomi, tu peux parler anglais ou bien français comme tu veux? Ok, je suis là. Un bout de correction. Nicoa. Oui. Alors, question nous, c'est concernant le projet Collabo. Hein? Est-ce que, puisque il est directement avec Creative, est comment vous faites ça pour vous? Quand projet, est-ce que vous des créatifs d'autres pays ou bien vous avez C'est alors implication directe créative que vous avez dans le projet. Ok, well, my question is mostly about the Collabo project. And uh, do you work directly with the creatives or uh, do you work with other countries or do you receive the ideas first? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, a couple of different things. The, the the team clearly was inspired by trying to build a tool that would benefit artists first and foremost. Let me pause there for translation. <laughs> uh, oui, c'est-à-dire que l'équipe était plus inspirée pour créer un outil pour artistes. And as I said before, the proximity is an important piece. So if you were to look at the, you know, the small team who built the Collab app, many of them themselves are artists or you know, aspiring artists, I would say. Okay, so I'm going to on the point of proximity. Proximity is important with people. That's why the collab is a thing that was created just by an artist. So as they were building out the application, it was really important for them to truly engage with musicians. So some of the first people that used the app before we rolled it out to the world and before we opened up the beta to the world 
we're musicians. We wanted to make sure it would work for them and build with them. Okay, donc application, c'est d'abord engager musicien. Donc avant pour nous t'envoyer application, l'ouvrir pour le monde, nous t'avons essayé d'abord avec monde que t'es créé, que nous t'es créé le bouillon. Hein? Donc nous t'avons fait d'abord avec musicien. Okay, that's good. We're taking well, a lot of questions. We don't have a lot the last thing I'll just say is that it will be global. We're, we're getting there. Mais n'a pas global, n'a pas pour le monde entier. Okay, Baudry, ou qu'a posé question pour nous? Okay, you hear me? Yeah, but put your video. Okay. All right, my name is Bodhi Jasovnel. So I'm a software developer and I use many products uh, from Facebook like React Native, React.js. And today I start learning blockchain and I, I start develop too. The, my question is about Libra cryptocurrency from Facebook. Uh, I would like to know what about Libra today and what a community like a Asian community can expect from this cryptocurrency. That, that's all. Let me help you understand the question again. You said, what, is the, what, is, what can you expect from the currency? And then what was the question before it? What a community like AT, Asian community, can expect from a Libra today? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a couple different things, which are just like semantics. The, the name has now changed. There's the Libra Association, who controls the blockchain and then also um, you know, effectively is running the blockchain. We wanted to make sure that that was separate from Facebook. And then there's Novi now is what we call it. So that's the Facebook team that's building on top of the Libra blockchain. And their ultimate goal is to build a wallet. I'll pause there and I'll keep going. But translation. So the thesis for what the, the Novi team set out to do hasn't changed since day one, which is we want to figure out a way to make sending money between one person could be here in the United States to you in Haiti as easy as it is to send a message or send a photo because technology should enable that and should allow that. The solution and the approach that they're taking is to definitely use a blockchain and, uh, and to, to build out their blockchain. So that's where the Libra Association is. So if this Novi gets out there, if the Libra Association gets out there and people start to adopt it as a tool, being able to send money between, I don't know if you have family here in the United States or anywhere else around the world, should be quicker, cheaper, and more efficient for everyone involved. And that, that's ultimately going to keep money in the hands of people who are, you know, as we all know, hardworking and, and earning that money. That's it. Can, can we expect an API, an API from Libra? For this Libra? From, from Libra? Or, or an from API. Libra? An API? From, so in the blockchain, you can absolutely go and build on the blockchain. I actually don't know what the new rules are as a developer that are governing who can build on the, on the, on the chain or not, but um, we can follow up with Mark to give you kind of the latest and greatest from a governance perspective. On the Novi side, um, in terms of the wallet that they're building, I think it's too early. I don't know that they are thinking about how they would extend an API yet because uh, we're still in these early days of making sure that there's a consumer, consumer use case that we can build for. Okay. Your, your, the DJ lawyer is now on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, you're on. You're on mute. Hello. Hi, Miss Thank you for noticing my my profile, and uh, it's really an honor. And um, during this pandemic, Valencian being creative and being a lawyer also has been very challenging. And of, and of course, being able to DJ online has been a light of hope for me to do what I do because I can't be in contact with my fans, I can't be in contact with the public. Really using uh, the tools, uh, the online tools, Facebook has been really helpful. And I don't really have a question, but I look forward for the platform for Facebook to be more friendly to help me being online more easily. And, and I'm sure the developers are working toward that because um, this situation really helps see um, what works, what didn't work, how to make uh, the platform more friendly, as I was saying. And I look forward to continue being, being live on Facebook. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it's funny, both as a DJ and also as a lawyer, you get this, which is, you know, new constraint is given to the world. You're seeing these beautiful creative things happening where DJs are, are spinning sets for hours 
on our platforms, but then you put on your lawyer hat you know, and you know all about, you know all about music rights. <laughs> and, exactly, and what I look forward to doing during uh, this creative tech lab, being able to balance both the lawyer side to, to bringing ideas because uh, it's very challenging for the copyrights in, in Haiti and I look forward to put that in service also in my creative side as a DJ. Absolutely, yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we are. We're, we're interested in partnering with the industry and with creative folks to show how our tools can be used in the way that has been bringing people joy during this pandemic. So, uh, great to meet you. Again, another one of the many interesting profiles I got the opportunity to read. Um, I'm going to take three questions in a row because we are short on time and we have to start the other panel. So I promoted um, everyone who raised their hand the last batch. You can all turn up, you can t all turn on your radio, your video now, and then you can ask a question one after the other. Angie, Oliga, all of you, you can make it a, a panel. You can all turn on your videos so Ime can see all of you. So Oliga, go first. Um, maybe, okay. yeah. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, so, um, my name is Oliga, I'm a visual artist, illustrator, and me artist. So my question is about like um, the collab app you've been talking about. So you've been talking about the music part. So since I'm like I'm a I'm a visual artist, and I, I was just thinking like, what do you have like in plan for? If you see like when I see collab, I see music, but I see also visual. Two visual artists can put themselves together and collaborate on the platform. So what do you have in mind, like uh, in plan for like for the visual or the designer, like uh, in terms of this app? Okay, yeah. let's just take all three questions. I hope you can catch all of them, Ime. Yep. Angie. Hello. All right, perfect. Um, hi, my name is Angie Bell. I am a marketing specialist. My question is regarding Creole as a language. I know you speak only one language, but my Facebook is actually in Creole um, because I always try, I'm always trying to see how is it evolving because as Creole is, a, is an evolving language anyway, I want to know what is being done to keep developing um, Creole and Facebook because I, I see and notice that there are some traduction that are not done and, and things like that. So I want to see how are, how is Facebook basically communicating with either Haiti or other platforms that can promote Creole as a language on Facebook. Okay, and Tony, you, you cut off. Just one last question because we have to move on, we're out of time. Okay, Ime, maybe it's going to be just two questions for you so we can close and thank you so much for your time. Yeah, no worries, I'll tackle the two. So on the visual artist side, and this is uh, some of the best products at Facebook in history in the last 16 years have been built not because the product managers or someone said, hey, this is how we want this product to be used around the world, but rather because people stepped up and said, hey, I'm gonna hack this product in order to, to use it for my use case. So I love the fact that um, you know, you're thinking about how collab can be a, a tool for visual artists too. I could think of like one or two ways to actually pull that off and make that happen, but um, even better would be to just get collab in your hands and see how you would want to use it and get the feedback from you. So Mark, I would love to connect uh, with him. Um, the second question about Creole and kind of ever evolving languages, you know, the earliest translations on Facebook were done by the community. It wasn't because we were able to hire a bunch of people that I think Spanish might have been the first language that we translated into or French. Um, but it was because we built tools so that the community could do self-translation on the platform. And I think overnight, actually, when we turned on the French self-translation, uh, the whole entire site was translated in less than 24 hours. So I believe that there still are some community tools that folks in, in Haiti could use to continue to evolve and make sure that we're getting feedback on Creole. But I'll take that also as a to-do to check in with our internationalization team, which is fairly robust, as you can imagine, at this point, and see where Creole is on their language roadmap and how they're keeping it fresh and up to date. Well, I hope we have more progress going on and more things happening. And really, the goal of having you here is really to keep the focus on Haiti, right? Because when you come to Haiti, even if it's virtually, the world focuses. People start writing about it. Facebook also start mobilizing. They're starting asking questions about Haiti. Now we can get questions about Creole in there. 
we're very, very honored for your time. And we thank you very much for doing this. We've been trying to do this for years. And I'm very happy we could do it. And that's probably one of the opportunities of COVID. Now we can find time in your agenda and get you in Haiti virtually. Thank you very much, Ime. We're going to move to the next panel. And really, I'm very proud to be a Facebook Developer Circle lead and being able to leverage all the resources at Facebook to empower developers and continue to grow the path of Haiti, whether it's creative, whether it's other type of apps. We're very committed and we'll continue building. Thank you so much. I appreciate much. you. Thank you for inviting me. And good luck with the program, everybody. Thank you.